News, our local schools respond to the tragedy in Connecticut. Spreading the spirit to our seniors, local teens go above and beyond to share some joy with the elderly this Christmas. Plus, is it the end of the road for this trolley tradition? The famed trolley lady talks retirement along her luminaria route. Good evening. Thanks for being with us. The nation is working to cope with the elementary school shooting that claimed at least 27 lives in Connecticut this morning. Locally, school officials are urging parents to have thoughtful conversations with their children about today's events. Great Falls school administrators described news of the mass shooting as gut-wrenching. Superintendent Cheryl Crawley says right now it is key that students of all ages are aware of what happened. The most important thing is to take the time to sit down with children and actually talk about it. Because if you allow the children to just think about it and they conjure up their own uh, scenarios about what could happen, it could be way more fearful. Dr. Crawley says discussions on today's event will be happening inside classrooms next week. The school district has posted tips on their website for parents to start the discussion at home. You can find a link for those tips at krtv.com. A rollover accident this afternoon south of Great Falls sent two area men to the hospital. Montana Highway Patrol responded to the accident on I-15 just after 1 o'clock. The truck was hauling a trailer carrying a smaller SUV when it rolled, trapping the 72-year-old driver inside. MHP reports the 58-year-old passenger was able to crawl out of the truck and was then airlifted to Benefis via Mercy Flight. The extent of the injuries is not yet known, but officials say they are not believed to be life-threatening. Troopers say winds along the interstate and an improperly secured load likely caused the rollover. Meteorologist Mike Rollins joins us now. Mike, should drivers be concerned about this high uh, winds this evening? No, I think many areas are just looking at fairly light to calm winds. It looks like an isolated event here with just some stronger gusts for about an hour or so. Many areas right now reporting light winds all across north central Montana and clear skies. In the east, it's a different story. We've got dense fog going on right now in Glasgow with quarter mile visibility. I've got a look ahead to your Friday evening forecast and the updated weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. All right, thanks, Mike. Students at Great Falls Central are turning our culture's obsession with shopping into a means of making money to, in turn, make a difference. The sophomore class project was started after Central's priests spent a significant amount of time in the hospital and now at a nursing home. KRTV's Beth Beachy tells us more about the community service. At Great Falls Central, it's a part of each student's Catholic identity to complete 20 community service hours a year. And when sophomore Abby Bliss heard that Father Mac was missing the kids' faces after recovering from an infection, her and her mom came up with two ideas that caught on with the rest of the class. She decided that the shop and drop would work. And so when we had the shop and drop, kids came, the parents could drop their kids off, and for about four hours they would stay and do different activities such as coloring and Play-Doh and stuff. It was really fun. All of us had just a blast. It was, it was really fun. Bliss says allowing parents to pay a small fee for the sophomore class to watch their kids while they Christmas shopped seemed like a perfect way to earn community service hours and raise money for charity. Then her and her mom put two and two together and came up with the perfect idea to visit all those who may like to see some smiling young faces. And not just give something to Father Mac, but all the residents. So it was a really great way to just had to do something with the community and have fun with the kids. So the sophomore class bought presents with their shop and drop money and put together 150 presents for all the residents at Missouri River Care and Rehabilitation Center. And it was clear Father Mac was proud of all of his students who used their service hours in are such a thoughtful you, way. Good. Oh, I think in a situation like this, the, the real stuff about the kids comes out. You know, they don't have to fake it. They can be good Christian kids. And so many other residents enjoyed the company of these teens and even got a little surprise in time for Christmas. It's kind of nice to take the money that we got and give it to somebody else. In Great Falls, Beth Beachy, MTN News. Father Max says he's in the last stages of recovery and hopes to be back in the halls of Great Falls Central within the next couple weeks. Meanwhile, students from Foothills Community Christian School have doubled their good deed doing through an annual tradition. The Foothills crew donated nearly 350 gift boxes to the Great Falls Rescue Mission. Each box is filled with necessities and they also donated toys for each child at the mission. This year, the number of donations skyrocketed because the school offered a special prize to encourage friendly competition between classes. We told each of the classes to bring in um, the boxes and whichever class brought in the most 
got a week of free dress, and as you know, at Foothills we have a dress code, so it was a nice incentive. The wrapped gift boxes are labeled to give to an age and gender appropriate recipient. Presents will be distributed during the annual children's Christmas party at the Mission next week. The state of Montana has launched a new software program which has caused disruptions in the food stamps program. MTN's Marnie Banks spoke with one woman who has been without her benefits for more than a week. A woman in Great Falls told me her story and she asked me to keep her name and identity private. But she's a mother of five and her husband works a seasonal job so they depend on food stamps to get through the winter. This month when her benefits were scheduled to be deposited, they didn't come. We just really depend on the food stamps right now. So basically, we're, we, uh, all the, the money that was going to be going towards, like, say, rent or bills or stuff, I have to put now toward, directly towards food, and that takes up most of the page, my paycheck. The Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services launched a new software system in November. It runs several public assistance programs, including the SNAP program, which is food stamps. And the state admits there have been some glitches. You know, we've received calls, and you know, I've talked to I've talked to some of clients myself that, you know, they called up and wanting to know, um, you know, what's going on with my SNAP benefits. Why, you know, um, they're not there. They should be there. And when that's happened, we've we've responded um, as quickly as we can. Sometimes that same day to get it figured out. The new system is a thirty million dollar program and is expected to make processing and paying out benefits easier. More than 120,000 Montanans are on food stamps, and eBelt says most every one of them received their benefits last month, to the tune of $15 million. He says he doesn't know how many didn't receive their payment, but those cases were handled on an individual basis. It's a lot of people that come through our offices of public assistance all over the state. We know their name, we know their face, um, you know, they're real people. If there was uh, communication to us, us people who happen to have, to have the need for the benefits, I don't think I would have had as big an issue as I did, but there was no communication. There was no heads up that there even could be a problem. Ebelt says the state probably could have done a better job communicating, but he assures the clients the state is working hard to work out the kinks so there aren't any more disruptions. In Helena, Marnay Banks, MTN News. Dozens of people showed up in court today for a rare celebration. They're saying thanks and sending well wishes to Judge Thomas McKittrick as he wraps up his duties in district court. A party this afternoon was open to the public so folks could stop by and chat with Judge McKittrick before he steps down from the bench. As lines formed to talk with the judge, those closest to him reflected on the number of lives he's impacted during his 30 years of service. I'm excited for him. He has grandchildren that he's going to get to go see in Oregon and a new grandchild on the way. He'll have a lot of time to go fishing. He hasn't had much time to do that. He's been pretty busy. Um, it, it's gonna be sad to see him go though. I've known him since about 1984. Scanlon was McKittrick's administrative assistant for the last 10 years. She says his retirement hasn't hit her just yet and probably won't until he's moved out of the office. We'll have much more on McKittrick's career coming up next week. First, a, a decent weekend to get through. Yeah. Pretty decent around here. You know, we'll, this time of the year, you got to worry sometimes about winter storms. Are the roads going to be of okay? Uh, still a concern tonight in our northeastern counties because mm -hmm. of dense fog. It just not, has not burned off today like we thought it would. Uh, Verge, one of our pals here at KRTV, <laughs> sending in this photo. And check it out. This is from fog. We've got freezing fog going on and it condenses out onto anything it, it comes in contact with and we see ice developing and, and there's still con some, some concern tonight that we could get some scattered power outages in our northeastern counties because of uh, that freezing fog condensing out onto some of the power lines. That was near Hinsdale. You can upload your photos to us, our email, Facebook, Twitter account, also our website, all sources of information for you as well. Stay with us. Your complete forecast is next when the 530 News continues.